diaspora of, 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 of this world. But let's deal with first and first with Los Angeles, okay? Let's deal with the fact that before Rodney King, there were black men and women being suffering from the LAP Police Department. And it kept going on over and over and over again. You in this generation, you, you have cameras, you have phones, you have a, a small voice and everything. Some of this may be new to you, but your parents and grandparents, they suffered through this. They suffered, some of them suffered, most of them suffered very quietly through this because they felt that they did not have a voice, that they could not speak up, that if they did speak up, there would be repercussions. That shit is old. That shit, there's no reason, there's no reason why anybody should not be speaking up. If it, even if you think it doesn't affect you, it does affect you. One thing that concerns me about this whole thing, and I don't want to get on my soapbox or anything with this, but one thing that's concerned me in the last couple of years, and especially the last year that's happening with the Black Lives Matter thing, is that once that got to a flash point and there was supposed to be some real change and some and some type of unity between different groups that were trying to be, um, I guess, open hearted to the struggle of black people and all persecuted people in America, right? Things were shut down. The boy, those forces were shut down last year. Those voices were shut down because they were getting to a power target that people would actually have to listen. And so, if you really do feel in your heart, you know, this is not just about the LA uprising and the riots. You really do feel in heart that this stuff is really happening now and something that's building. I, I, I expect you to keep on talking, keep on kicking up dust. Because this is not just one isolated event in time and moment of time. This can propagate over and over and over again. You know, one of the irony things is a particular teacher that, that I think about an aftermath of 25 years of riots is how many people throughout the community had been displaced from South Beach. South Beach was totally, I mean, of course we know cities evolve and they change and they propagate and they change the demographics and stuff. But I think that, that this event changed LA in such a way that an exacerbation was made to, to displace more black people out of Los Angeles. I mean, I don't want to get on something else different or anything, but this is what's really on my heart. As someone who has lived in this community, I still fly in this community. My main business is still in Lamar Park. You know what I mean? Like, the, you know, I just feel like that 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 there's there's so much that that went on with this with this event. But since now, 25 years, and it's still ongoing and going. Yeah, I, I think this this is a real important discussion. Now, if you want to weigh in, Zoe. Yeah, I, I think what Henry Kiki Watson is saying is the same thing Jefferson said, Thomas Jefferson, and that is that revolution is necessary, and that, it, it, that, it, that, good, that, that a revolution now and then is, is important, it's necessary. And we wouldn't see the advances made had Los Angeles not burned. 25 years ago, I used to be a white male, you know? So I, <laughs> I, I, used be, I, I, I used to be that demographic. So flying over the city and, you know, I thought like a white guy, and I'm thinking, these fucking black people are burning down their own city. Don't, don't they know, don't they know? 25 years later, I think it was essential that LA burned, that South Central burned. Okay. And I think that this, there's another revolution going on in this country. We have a, a person in the White House that was elected on three principles, trannies and bathrooms, oh. Black Lives Matter, and Muslims. Wow. Race, this is racist. Deep, yeah. This, is, this yeah. is a racist America. I had no idea that 50% of the population, 50% of the population is as racist as they are and stupid as they are. So. You need, you need to, we need to, to expand on this, and you need to educate white people like me and others, and we need to dialogue, because what we know, we don't fear. And the truth is, white people, this is the last gasp of, of, of white power, and, 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 and they're fighting. <laughs> they're fighting because they're afraid of change. Change is coming, and, and it's good. And in this riot, Mr. Watson, you don't know this, but he's actually a nice guy. He's a sweet guy. No, I'm not. But, but you saw the rage in this man, and I get it now, 25 years later, and... 
we're fighting. You have to fight and stake out your territory in this country. And if you don't, you're just going to be run over. So let me press you a, great, let me press you a little bit and keep this dialogue going. Because one of the things we're doing here is having one of those uncomfortable conversations that the BLM says it's all about. We have to first have disruption. And this was kind of a 92 version of disruption. Black Lives Matter has two hallmarks to it. Disruption first, right? We're going to cut through the complacency by shutting it down our collective complacency about racial injustice, and then uncomfortable conversations. Then we're gonna have some uncomfortable, and now we're having some of those uncomfortable conversations, right? And this is important. And so I'd like you, uh, Zoe, to, to, to speak to, to, to Sun Wong and say, explain to her a, a little bit about revolution is necessary, but speak to the victim, the innocent victim of that revolution. Now. I'll say this, and, and by the way, mm -hmm. congratulations to you guys for I don't think anyone looked good. <laughs> you know, I think you were real with, with the people that the LA4, as well as the LAPD. I think you gave, finally, Lieutenant Luan got his. Aren't you up here? Why aren't you up here? You can Why aren't you up here? You spoke so well in Dr. Miller, shouldn't be in a seat. Jump up here, sit down, Dr. I didn't even know you were here. Okay. said I caused the riots. So, <laughs> so you, you outranked me, but, but I, I'll say this, what he went through is horrific, painful. I cried, I mean, I literally, and I'm pretty hard uh -huh. to see what you went through and see your family, everything that they lost, and there's nothing that's ever gonna make it whole. Nothing, and you were a victim. <laughs> You're a victim in all of this, and, I, and I'm sorry, but I've been a victim too. I took $154,000 damage to the helicopter uh, we were shot at. I basically uh, ended up in 10 years of litigation. I mean, we, but we're better for it. You're stronger for it. And you're here today dialoguing and you're gonna make a difference. So you hold your head up high and you're proud, you're proud that you survived and you're stronger. Because you're not weak. I don't think I've ever been weak, you know, especially being an immigrant's daughter and to overcome, but it's been my faith you know, that I have to do this. I mean, obviously, my life will never be the same. How can it ever be the same? You know, but all said and done, you're right. You know, all of us are survivors. And, you know, believe it or not, all of us are victims. You know, we all have faced discrimination. I went from white male to tranny. So, <laughs> and, let me, and let me tell you. So